And we're doing a live right now. What's up, everybody? This is Jose Trujillo, the one and only world's greatest living artist. We're about to start doing some work. We're about to start doing some work, some, some work out there. Let's get it done. Get her done. What is it? Get, get her done. Get her done. <laughs> Get it in. Let's do this, baby. What's up, baby? We got lots of work to do, so we gotta we gotta get started. I think so. All right, let's get to it. Paint out. Bam, bam. Man, that dog. He loves to bark. Okay, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some florals here. Okay, a couple of little florals. Tape, huh? No, those are the uh, fragile stickers. It's it's the fra it's the 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 rolls of fragile stickers. Yeah, thirty rolls. Thirty rolls of fragile stickers. So we have a lot to do today, so I won't be able to do so many lives, my friends. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm gonna be here kicking it with you guys as I can, as I'm able to. I got some videos that I need to be recording for our for our monthly membership platform, uh, and so that's gonna be there. Uh, and I also have some uh, commissions to do and and some other stuff that I'm preparing for you guys who have been following my je ne sais quoi all this time so just like that Man, yesterday I did some loony paintings. Yesterday's paintings were like, were too funny. They're good, but I, I did a couple of them that just made me laugh.
How's it going, Wendy? What's happening, people? I'm really enjoying recording the videos for our workshops, for our monthly membership workshops, uh, because I'm, I'm putting everything out there. So I'm having a lot of a lot of fun doing that. I'm spending a lot of time doing that lately. And like I said, I'm going to be releasing those videos. We're gonna be releasing two a month, but I'm gonna be releasing more than that this, uh, this next couple of weeks because we need to have more. We need to have more. And so that's gonna be fun. For those of you who are looking to learn how to do what I'm doing here, it's not that difficult, but there are some, some, uh, some, a couple of rules that I follow when I'm painting. And so, so some of that stuff is what I'm going to be uh, teaching. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Un poquito español, claro que sí, cómo no. Vamos a hacer unos videos en español también. Unos en castellano. It's been, it's been a little hot in Tucson. I'm not gonna lie. It's been a little hot, but hell, whatever, you know? I'm starting to sound like those people that are just talking about weather. But you, you, you'll start talking about weather if you're in Tucson. <laughs> you'll start talking soon enough about, about, about cheesy stuff like that. Just how hot it is here. How's it going, Alicia? Good to see you here. Claro que sí. B boutique, boutique, uh, boutique Jalisco. Ya se me olvidaba de Jalisco boutique. Uh, sí, claro que sí. Vamos a hacer unos español. Pincel grande siempre. Always, a, always a, a white brush. El pincel grande ayuda mucho porque cubre más espacio y es más para mí, verdad? Es más, es más. Uh, Expresivo, hay, hay más expresión en un pincel ancho, en un pincel grande. Nada más que cuando haga videos en español me van a tener que perdonar, ¿por qué? Porque de repente, de repente está con mi Spanglish. Y este, no es que se me olvide el español, es que estoy, eh, no, no tengo, no tengo mucha práctica con, como la tenía antes. Cada vez más y más hablo menos español. Mi esposa y yo de vez en cuando nos ponemos a platicar en español, pero, pero um, no, no lo hago con, con mucha gente, al menos cuando hablo con mi familia, con mis hermanos, en mi familia directa. Soy un, soy un, soy un morro spanglish ya. Soy un morrillo spanglish. Look at that. <laughs> Sí, no voy a hacer que de repente me digan, no, este cabrón ya se le olvidó el español. Y pues no, eso me, eso, eso, eso causaría muchos llantos de telenovela en mis ojos. No es, no es cierto eso. Lo que pasa es que soy un morro spanglish ya. Así lo, así lo quiso el destino. 
Look at this, guys. I, I, I'm talking all kinds of all kinds of nonsense in, in Spanish. For those of you who are like, what the hell is he talking about? All kinds of nonsense. El color de fondo es un azul uh, o, o verde viridiano que viene siendo algo así como turquesa. Es una mezcla de viridian con azul. El viridian lo pueden encontrar en el verde o en el azul. Y ya lo venden, las compañías ya lo venden, ya lo venden mezclado. Las compañías de pintura. So, that's what makes it super easy to paint now. Someone's asking me about the, the background color and I'm saying that it's a, it's a viridian and a phthalo blue. But most companies already sell the the, the mix already. See, a, a lot of the work that I do, I don't I don't pre-mix because most most colors are mixed already. So I keep a very simple palette. Charles, esto se va a convertir bien Spanish estas clases. Ni pedo. Yeah, no different in English then, right? <laughs> Well, English is my second language, and I and I've been I've been uh, I've been telling my my Spanish uh, my Spanish speaking peeps here that that uh, that I speak less and less Spanish as I get older, and so sometimes I feel like my Spanish gets super rusty. Just because I don't, I don't use it often. Maybe I should start doing some classes in Spanish, some workshops or demos. Maybe some tutorials or something like that in Spanish, because that'll keep me. That'll keep me talking. So there it is, check it out. Very simple stuff, nothing. I'm a simple guy, I don't like complicated stuff. Things get too complicated, um, they kind of lose their flavor, you know? I like to keep it simple and playful. I should be. I should be doing some some Spanish, some some Spanish stuff for my for my amigos. Okay, let's do some uh, let's do some florals. I'm gonna do a large floral. So I got this this canvas from uh, Michaels. And it's a it's a black canvas. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to go about it. Because I know one or two of you out there tint your canvases. Tinting just meaning that that you put some some uh, some background color into it or whatever or whatevs. And uh, and so I'm going to show you how I how I tackle this this puppy right here. It's very simple. Yeah, it's super sexy. Mucho sex. <laughs> How's it going, my friend? <laughs> and you guys haven't you guys haven't heard my podcast because I haven't done I haven't done a I haven't done a podcast like in I don't know like in three months since the Rona started, and so you guys haven't heard my sexy voice. I do a sexy voice on my podcast. So look, here's how we're gonna start it. We're just gonna we're gonna get a, a, a gray here, very light gray. We're gonna start doing our florals. This is gonna be florals, by the way. Let's start doing some florals. Unas florecitas ahí. Ahí no más, a ver qué sale. Look at that. 
Uh, I'm working on oil. Uh, Wendy, yeah, I'm working on oil. This is oil on, 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 uh, with walnut oil. It's what I'm mixing it with. Oh, thank you so much, Art, uh, Art of uh, BT. I appreciate that. <laughs> so check it out. Just a few little lines here to make our, our, our flowers. What I'm really doing is I'm, I'm, I'm sketching it how most artists, I guess, would do it. But most artists stay a very long time when they're sketching because they're trying to look for, for a, a sense of realism. I'm really not. Um, they're, trying to, they're trying to do a representational work. It's very nice to do representational work. You get a lot of views online, but but I just I don't like I don't like working in it. It takes too long, you know. Realism or representational work takes too too long, and so I I still do representational work, but but I do it this way. I do it very very loose. But it doesn't mean it has to be sloppy, you know. Loose doesn't mean sloppy. It just means. I'm not taking as much time as, as most cats out there. I don't want to. I, I don't like it. It sucks. Because then I can't move on to the next painting quick enough. And I, I want to move on to the next painting too. I mean, I want to be here when I'm with this painting, but when I'm finished with this painting, I, I want to move to the next one. Because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just crazy like that, so. Boom. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start putting some color in there, in those in those florals. Okay, I, I didn't I didn't tint this canvas. I got it like that. I got it at Michaels. At Michaels. I don't know if you guys seen those 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 black canvases at Michaels. And I and I got it because there wasn't anything else. I was like, dude, I need some canvases because because when I when I order canvases, they take a while to get here. Right now. Because of the Rona, people are just taking a, a longer, like the, the FedEx or the postal, U, UPS or whatever. And so I, I rent to, to Michaels to get. I, I do that quite quite often. I run to Michaels to see if I can catch some canvases. And so I wasn't able to catch any, except this ones of this size. So I was like, whatever, dude. Let's let's paint them. And so check it out. Look very very simple boom this is the beauty of painting loose now there's a lot of people out there that are claiming that they're teaching painting loose but they're really they're really painting realism uh, it's just not very tight it's not it's not tight realism it's not tight representational work and so uh, to me, that's that's a form of it, but it's not really loose. Loose is when you're painting and you don't really have a, a, a reference image or you're not really paying attention much, much to your reference image. And that's really how you get loose. There's a lot of people out there that ask me, do you, do you have reference images? All the time. But I try not to follow them. I, I don't follow them. Um, and so I just get, I get them and I use them as a little roadmap. But I don't, I don't stick to it so much. And the reason why is because if you stick to it so much, you're not able to really be loose. Because you can only really be loose when you're, when you're, when you're not thinking, and when you're fully into the painting. And so you can't be looking at your reference and then trying to paint and be loose at the same time. It's, a, it's a little bit more difficult. And so, no hate on the on the hustle of, of artists out there. I know, I know everybody's trying to hustle their 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 work and their classes and all of that. That's awesome. But to me, that's not really loose. When you're doing something uh, realism and, and and you're and you're you're trying to match the right color, the right. That's not. That's there's no way that's loose. That's very tight. To me, loose is when, when, when the color doesn't even make sense, but maybe the brush stroke makes sense, or vice versa. The brush stroke doesn't make sense, but the color makes sense. And so, 
So it's a for there to be looseness in the work, I believe there has to be sacrifice somewhere. And usually the, the first part that I that I see the sacrifice is in in the representational aspect of a painting. If you're able to sacrifice that for a little bit, you suspend it for a little bit. You know, it's not going to look like a photograph. Awesome. It's not going, I'm not attempting for it to look exactly like that. If there is some sacrifice, you're able to play with it more. If that makes any sense. Nice, nice. Turkey, I love that. Estás copiando, inventas. Es algo que acabo de decir a, a, ahorita a la raza. Estoy diciéndoles que, que es una, 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 una mezcla. Una mezcla de, de copiar un poco pero e, e inventar a la vez. Necesitas de copiar e inventar para que pueda realmente ser, a tener más libertad en un cuadro. En inglés le llaman, le llaman to be loose, pero es, es realmente tener libertad. Hay más libertad, hay más... Hay más Hay más juego en el cuadro cuando no copias directamente, nada más lo usas un poquito, lo usas un poco para para que te guíes, te guías un poco con, con, con una fotografía o con un dibujo o lo que sea, pero no lo, cope, no, no lo copias. Iba a decir copias, pero copiar es tomar, ¿verdad? No lo copias. Oh, thank you so much. Wendy says, I really, it really helps to hear what you're thinking. Thanks for that. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. And so that's, um, that's pretty much how I do it. I try to stay away from, from, uh, from the, all the complications that that art brings art, painting is 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 either very simple or very complicated and i think that's why people have such a hard time with it many people have a hard time with painting because it can either be very simple or it can be very complicated and and the reason why it's so complicated is because people don't learn how to be loose so their whole lives they're painting but they never loosen up and so when they try to teach they're trying to teach uh, all the theory and, and the complications of painting. Painting, the theory of painting is extremely complicated. It's not, it's not simple. The theory of painting is very, very complicated. Um, because so many things play in there. There's so many things. It's like music. I, mean, I, I believe music theory is very complicated. Maybe some musicians might, might disagree with that, but but if it wasn't that complicated, um, people wouldn't have such a hard time with sheet music, especially when you get into into uh, into more uh, elaborate stuff. I don't know. All of a sudden, you're playing a uh, what do they call it? When you're when you're, you're playing a classical a classical piece, but you have to play it. You're following, you're following. I don't know some master, I don't Bach or whatever, but 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 you have to put your own twist into it. You have to put your own feeling into it. And so, I I I personally feel it's very complicated. Maybe that's why I stepped away from it. I don't know. Uh, but let's talk about something that I know because I don't know shit about music. I know about painting. Painting, the theory of painting is very complicated because it has so many things. Uh, what I mean by this is, for example, you're thinking about, there you go, thank you so much, it's, it's, that's what, it, that's what it's called, a, a presto bibati. See, we have a musician in town. <laughs> hey, Daniel, you need water or anything? That is, that is what it's called, a presto bibati. And so... I, I feel that that's what makes it so complicated. For example, in painting, uh, you're looking at a reference, but you have to you have to be able to put it in your own way. And when you're looking at a reference, the reference might not necessarily it's it's not necessarily like music, it, like linear. 
right? It's not necessarily linear like that. Uh, when you're looking at something, it, the, 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 whatever you're looking at, it might be a reference photo, it might even be another painting, it might be uh, you're painting plein air, you're looking at uh, uh, outdoors. But, but when you put it here, you still have to compose it. You know, it's not composed out there unless unless you're looking at a very professional painting, in which case you're probably just copying, not necessarily using it as a reference. And, and so that doesn't work. Uh, so when you look at something and you put it on the canvas, on your canvas, you have to compose it here because there's so many different things that are playing. Uh, first of all, the composition, right? The composition has, a, it's a major, major thing that it's playing uh, in there. The, the role of, of um, visual weight that's another thing that's playing not just the composition but where where are you placing things so that so that you create a balance not not I'm not talking about a layout like in composition but visual weight is something like like um, uh, not just the direction in composition you have direction where your eye goes in, in terms of direction but for example this could be completely blank and I could have a little rose over here. But if I have a rose over here and everything is blank, the, 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 the visual weight might be off. I might need to put something else here. And that, not, that has nothing to do with, comp with composition. That has to do with the balance of, a, of the visual weight. When you look at a painting, is it balanced? And so I'm not even getting into, into all the other stuff, which is color theory, uh, and not, just, not just what colors go well with each other, but you go into you go into values into tones i mean it's a whole circus and so the 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 and and god forbid you get into into painting something more uh more uh, extravagant like like uh conceptual art then you really get into some shit in there uh so i, I believe i believe it's very complicated if you approach it that way but the way that I learned how to approach it is I, I got, I learned the rules, I got it, but I don't paint with them. I, I, I keep them on the side, I keep them as tools in a toolbox. I'm, I'm not constantly using the rules. And that's why some people say, I don't get it. Why did you put, the, you painted a boat, a green boat, but the reflection of the boat is red. Why would you do that? Because it makes sense in my mind. I'm not, I'm not using the rules. I, I have them there and I use them whenever I want to, but I'm not, I'm not following them uh, step by step. If, if I did that, my paintings would be very boring, which happens to a lot of artists. All of a sudden, their paintings become extremely boring because, because they're, they're so tight on following the rules. It's like, it's got to be by the book. Dude, if it's by the book, it's, the painting's going to suck. The painting is going to suck completely. Anyways, I hope that makes that makes sense. If it doesn't, I apologize. <laughs> Every now and then I talk some nonsense and this is part of it. Every now and then. I think I think most of the time I talk nonsense. Every now and then I say something that makes sense. Let's put it that way. I'm always talking nonsense. <laughs> I love how we had a musician here to rescue me from, from making a fool of myself. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, art, art, art or death. Thank you for that. <laughs>
But I, I think in theory, most most things are complicated. You know, it's like uh, people that that go and and uh, I was reading about some some old books. Um, when they when they they translate books, not only they have to translate the 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 time period, especially those very elegant books. No, those those books about about that 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 go beyond story that are more uh, like those uh, books of wisdom transformation of philosophy uh, or they're, they're more transcendental no? uh, not only do they have to translate the words of the time the meaning of the words because the word is, is you know how it was used the context right but also uh, the philosophy that they were trying to say so I was listening to what's his name I think his name is Steve, Stephen Mitchell he translated um, the Tao Te Ching a book of, of, of wisdom from, from China I think it was it was supposedly uh, the words of, of Lao, Lao Tse I think it's his name or was his name and and Stephen Mitchell touches on that how how he approached the book differently from the translations because because he had to he had to approach it from a non conceptual place using using the theory using the things that he knew using the the, the his knowledge on whatever it was linguistics I don't know what it was whatever is it, it is that they do when they translate those books using his knowledge but but he had to tap into something else which I always find interesting he had to type into uh, tap into his his inner wisdom in order to translate the book and and that's that's how I see painting when you're when you're you're looking at a reference use it but but tap tap into your own your own space when you're looking at a reference and that takes practice it's not going to be you know right away it's going to take some practice but the more you you tap into that the richer your painting becomes because you're no longer you're no longer copying anything you're you're using it you're using it to your advantage and and the best artists leave no trace of whatever they're looking at. They leave, they leave almost no trace of their reference photo. So there it is, my friends. I hope this uh, little segment found you well. And I can't wait to share more stuff with you guys. I am preparing a few videos that are gonna be coming out for our monthly subscription. And so be ready, be there or be square. Is that what it is? Be there, be square. Yeah, that is true. Sometimes you just become a, a slave to the reference, which is the worst thing, you know, that can happen because um, it doesn't allow you to to, to expand the whole thing about being an artist is, is, is expansive you know you need, you, need, you, need, you need to become expansive you look at something and then you you don't break it and you don't analyze because that's what analyzing does and that's why people become slaves to the, to the reference photo they break it down into little chunks they trace it and all of that that's fine there's, there's room for that as well but I'm saying if you want to become loose you can't analyze it. Analyzing it is breaking it and chopping it into small pieces. That, that is not how you become loose. And so what you need to do is observe it. Observing and analyzing is different. Analyzing is breaking it down. Observing is, is taking a step backwards. You take a step back and you, and you look, right? No judgment, 
no analytical mind working, no conceptual, nothing. It's, it's, you're just looking at it. And when you look at it, it all comes together. It just, it comes together. You don't have to break it down. You don't have to be like, there's a tree here, there's light over here, it's darker over here. Those, those are all uh, attempts to make sense of the natural world. As, a, as an artist, I don't think that, that that is the best approach. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting together a video for that as well. Uh, I have a whole list of videos that I'm going to be uploading to, to our monthly membership. And, and one of the videos is simply how to become more loose in painting. And in that video workshop, I'm going to be breaking down all, all the little myths out there about, you know, how to become loose and all of that. A lot of people talk about becoming loose, but like I mentioned, what they're doing is they're getting a reference and then, and then they're trying to do it as realistic as possible. And then, and then at the end of it, they start, they start creating abstractions out of it. And, and that's not loose. That's, that's, I don't know, that's, those are trends, and I like them, you know, no, no hate on the hustle, if it, if it works for those artists, that's fine, but that's not loose, to be loose is to start loose and end loose, because loose is a, is a matter of, it's an inner, it's, a, it's an inner job, it has nothing to do with the painting, it's an inner job, it's a relaxed state of painting, you're very relaxed, when you're painting, you start very relaxed, and you move relaxed, being loose is about having a almost a little spiritual awakening when you're when you're painting being loose is about a, a a relaxed state of mind a state of being that is very relaxed it's not it doesn't mean that you that you are thinking that you're thinking that you become not as smart you actually become smarter you you, you go above the thinking process you don't go under it a dog, a cat, they go, they're under the thinking process. A human is in thinking process, but when, you, when a human uh, suspends thinking for, for small periods of time, you, you go above the thinking process. You don't go below it, you go above it. Unless, unless, unless you're trying to suspend it by, I don't know, drinking or, or whatever, then you go below it. But, but when you suspend it without anything else, simply by breathing and relaxing, you go above the thinking. And, and, and so your brush strokes become wise. There, there's a wisdom that comes with it. And, and that's what I'm gonna be teaching. Well, thank you so much, Alicia. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, the membership is definitely worth it, guys. There, uh, we're just getting started. For those of you who are like, where's the next video there? Where the, where's the next video? They're coming out, guys. I have lots of stuff prepared for you guys and so the videos are coming um and it's so much worth it it's it's i mean 20 bucks a month for all of my videos all of my workshops is uh it's definitely worth it for someone who wants to to uh to learn some of the stuff that i have been have been uh learning throughout my career so we're gonna do another one right here It's going to be a landscape. And the key to painting loose is extreme focus. But it's not focus in the sense of thinking. It's about attention. It's extreme attention. So I sacrifice a little bit here when I'm doing these videos because I am thinking and talking to you guys as I'm doing the video. And, but, but I recommend when you're painting, don't, don't be talking to anybody, don't be, don't be on your phone. Uh, if you can, listen to music, but music that doesn't allow you to have emotional, like, like stuff that doesn't uh, make you go into, into sadness or thinking about something. No, try to remove that so that when you're when you're painting all you're doing is painting and you're doing it in such a way that, that you're fully there that you're fully there 
look look at the canvas when you're painting you you're supposed to look at the canvas like a newborn is looking at you with 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 mighty attention all of the attention is supposed to be there that's how that's how newborns look at look at their parents or look at humans no they, they, they look at you like with all this attention and the, the, the power of attention of a human being I mean that's 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 the superpower attention every time they, they've asked anyone who's had any sort of success in their life what it, what is the secret they, most of them say focus but really what they're trying to say is attention attention is focus and so when you're paying attention to your painting and you're using your reference as well that's fine but, you, but there has to be more attention in your painting than anything else because that's where the the, the, new, the little nuances the the create the, the the creativity that you have flowing through your through yourself pops out when you have extreme attention into something the creativity comes out like a, it's just waiting for you to give something attention so that so that you can overflow with creativity towards it I love I listen to Pavarotti. Pavarotti! I like <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever you listen to, you know, you could be listening to Corridos. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, I listen to Ramon Ayala sometimes and I have to, I have to turn it off. To be like, no, I, 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 can't, I can't listen to this right now. For long periods of time because it'll start, it'll get me thinking. So uh, I, I put sounds of... of of water uh, you know those 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 Zen sounds you can find them on YouTube or whatever and like a spring or 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 sounds in the woods natural sounds especially natural sounds so that I can stop thinking and and, and it helps me focus a bit more sometimes sometimes listening to something is not good either so you have to you have to find that listen to yourself you know listen to yourself if, if you feel like you, you're not you're not concentrating your your attention then stop listening to stuff you know, sometimes it's good for for an hour or so but, but but sometimes it starts bothering your 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 mind because it's it's messing your attention when when we get upset about something when we're like oh you know stop talking to me or, or be quiet i can't hear this or it's really because our attention is so divided that it, it, it bothers us. When your attention is very fragmented and divided, it, it, it becomes to feel like a... It just, it, 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 just, it, it messes with, with, your, with your, uh, your energy in your body. And so if you really want to become really good at painting, make sure you focus. Don't be on the phone. Don't, don't be talking to your friends on the phone and painting at the same time. Don't do any of that. Just focus for one or two hours or whatever your time is and, and give extra amounts of focus, like everything. Don't check your phone. Don't, don't, uh, don't stop every 10 minutes and look at the painting and go back. And, and go get some some water like don't do any of that give your full attention for at least an hour I mean as an artist I, I believe you must you must give your full attention to the painting for at least one hour uh, or 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 if you paint like me if you paint a little faster um, stay one hour painting giving attention to to whatever you're doing but but keep painting for at least one hour And, and the attention is going to be born out of that. I mean, your your attention is like fire, guys. It's like fire. You know, it's it's like a laser beam. You concentrate and you start a fire. 
All you gotta do is just concentrate it. Look at something for enough time. May, may, may have this feeling of 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 a, a spyglass. You know, or is it a spyglass or what do they call them? Those uh, those those glasses that, that that they show children starting fires with back in the day. Magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. I don't call it spyglass. A magnifying glass. <laughs> Um, that's what your attention is your attention is a magnifying glass that's why the, people talk about the law of attraction and all those things like whatever you focus on you know the more you focus on of course because that's what your attention is your, your attention enlarges whatever you focus on it enlarges it and, and it creates a fire if you, if you keep it long long enough there it'll create a fire and what I mean by a fire I'm not talking about a physical fire what I mean by a fire is that is that you'll you'll start making something happen if you keep your attention long enough you'll start making something happen You least uh, when you least realize you're gonna you're gonna notice that something's happening. So again, my friends, any of you interested in my monthly subscription, if you want to learn what uh, I've been talking about here and and more about painting, about marketing, and all the stuff that I that I've been doing. Uh, message me and I'll send you a link to that uh, you can unsubscribe anytime you want this is not a, a I'm not gonna lock you into anything uh, you can unsubscribe to to the to the subscription it's just 20 bucks a month uh, but I, I, I believe the, the way that it, this is going to unfold I'm barely getting started with it but I know that the way it's going to unfold it's going to help a lot of artists out there. As, it's, as this information has helped me, I know it's going to help many, many artists. That is, my, that is my dream, that I'm able to help as many artists as I can. Because uh, I, I know I, a lot of this information is needed out there. And, and it's not being told, it's not being said enough. I believe so. I'm like a, I'm like a fanatic when it comes to to helping others. Uh, I wasn't always like this. I, I barely started, not long ago, uh, helping other artists with their painting or their career, and I'm, I'm really excited about about helping other people right now. And I tell everyone, like, it doesn't matter whether you're signed up to my subscription or you buy my courses or not. I don't care. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach me here on Instagram or you can email me or whatever. And, uh, and if I can help you, I'll help you with whatever questions or, or challenge you're facing as an artist. Either you're selling your work or you're... you're uh, having a challenge painting and there it is look at that boom uh, absolutely bait I'll, I'll, I'll save this video
So there it is, my friends. My name is Jose Trujillo. I'm an artist and I'm here to help. Whatever I can help you with, let me know. If I can't help you, I'll be honest with you and I'll tell you I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna make up stuff just so that just so that I have an answer for you. I don't know everything, but I, I know some things. And those things have helped me a lot in my career. So let me give you a, a front view of this painting. Is there a landscape where I live? No, they, I mean there there isn't one. I live in a I live I live downtown. There's lots of landscapes here in, in Tucson but in Arizona but I don't I don't live close to a landscape that close. I live uh I live right in the downtown area. So thank you so much everybody. Peace out. Talk to you soon.